Kotlin's coroutines, especially with structured concurrency, are designed to be tidy so that every coroutine is accounted for whenever the work is canceled or an exception happens. But even so, there are a few gotchas that you'll need to be aware of. And in this video, I'm going to show three coroutine bloopers that you'll want to keep in mind. And then stay tuned after that when I'll share some exciting details about our upcoming coroutines course. But first, let's see how we can accidentally mess things up. Here I've got a script that reads these three CSV files and processes some information from each one. And these CSV files are just from the annual Stack Overflow developer survey licensed under the open database license. On this line here, I'm using the Kotlin CSV library to parse these files with support for quoted values so that, for example, commas within quotes won't throw things off. And then we simply process the year's code pro field from the record and update the number of records that we processed. So what could possibly go wrong with this code? Well, let's say that the user backs out of this part of our app, so we no longer need to process the CSV files at all. To simulate this, let's tell our script to cancel after 500 milliseconds. And when we run this, we'll notice that 500 milliseconds are gonna go by and nothing happens until all three of the CSV files have been fully processed. And there we go, now we get the cancellation exception. So why is that? Why didn't it cancel it when we told it to? Well, cancellation in Kotlin coroutines is cooperative. So if you've got a long running job like this, you gotta look up every once in a while to see if the coroutine has been canceled. And one way that we can do that is to use the ensure active function. And this function will throw a cancellation exception if the job has been canceled. And we can run this again. And now we can see everything gets canceled after 500 milliseconds. So when you've got a long running operation like this, be sure to look up every once in a while to see if the coroutine has been canceled. Next, this expression here has a string type but let's say that we wanted to use it as an integer instead. Well, we could just call to int on it like this. And when we run this, we'll notice an exception because some of the responses included non-number values like NA for not applicable. Well, one solution would be to just wrap our iteration in a try catch like you can see we're doing here. And we can run this, but we might be surprised to discover that we're back to the same problem as before where the cancellation doesn't happen until all of the CSV files have been processed. There it goes. So why is that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the ensure active function throws an exception called cancellation exception, but it's a subtype of exception. And since right here, we are catching everything that's an exception, that means we also catch cancellation exception. So the cancellation exception is getting caught and swallowed. So to fix this, we can catch a more specific exception type here. So for example, we can just catch a number format exception. And that way it won't also catch the uh, cancellation exceptions. And we can also move this out to the finally section of the try catch like this. And that would actually uh, be a little bit better because that way we'll still check to see if the coroutine is active regardless of whether the current record succeeds. Finally, let's come down here and remove the cancellation. And we're just going to run this and see how many records we get whenever this job finishes successfully. So here we got 162,671. Let's put a pin on this tab and run it again and see what we get next time. This time we got 162,697. So why is there a difference in the number of records processed each time? Well, this is a classic race condition where different coroutines are updating the value of the records processed variable at the same time. And the same thing goes for the exception count variable. Now, there are a few different ways that we can manage this, but since Kotlin 2.1.20, we can use an atomic integer from the standard library. And here's what that looks like. First, we just opt into this feature since it's still experimental. And then we just wrap our two counting variables with an atomic integer like this. And now when we run this again, 
we're going to get the same results every time. Let's see what we get. 162,741, and if we run it again, we get the same number. So when you've got shared mutable state, especially when you're updating it based on its previous value, it's a good idea to make sure that you can update it atomically. So those are just a few gotchas that are helpful to keep in mind as you're working with coroutines. Now, here at Type Alias Studios, I'm excited that our brand new coroutines and concurrency course kicks off in just a few days. And whether you're new to coroutines or maybe you've used them but still don't feel fully comfortable with them, uh, this course is designed to help you build confidence and take control. We're going to start with the foundational concepts that you need to form a strong mental model. And then we're going to graduate to topics like managing cancellations and exceptions, using coroutines and frameworks like Compose, how to test and debug them, and a whole lot more. We're also going to have live interactive sessions where I can chat with you and reinforce what you've learned and maybe help answer any questions that come up. Now, the course runs for three months, and each week we're going to release either new course content or we'll do an interactive session. And it's designed to be manageable, so plan to invest around an hour to an hour and a half each week. And that way, even if you're working full time, it should still fit comfortably into your schedule. Now, I got to make sure that I can keep up with everyone's questions and feedback. So for this first wave, uh, we are planning to limit the class to the first 25 students. And since those students are joining early, they'll also get the course at a reduced price. Registration for the course opens on Monday. Make sure you join the waitlist so that you'll be among the first to know as soon as it goes live. And if you haven't joined the waitlist yet, just go to coroutines.typealias.com. All right, that's it for today. See you next time.